Welcome to Science Easy Tech channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about carbohydrates part 3 that is dietary fibers. Already I have posted in my part 1 video about introduction to carbohydrates as well as classification of carbohydrates. In my part 2 video, I have discussed about functions, sources, as well as requirements of carbohydrates in detail. If you have not watched by part 1 and part 2 video, I have given the link in description box as well as in the end card and suggested icons. As well as you can watch our channel playlist BSc Nursing Nutrition first year for more videos. So this video will be useful for BSc Nursing first year students, post basic BSc Nursing students as well as students who are studying nutrition and dietetics. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Let's move on to the topic. Dietary fibers. What is dietary fiber? It is defined as the portion of plant material ingested in the diet that is resistant to digestion by gastrointestinal secretions. So here the dietary fiber when you are taking it, it is from plant source. So when you are in taking it, so it will not get fully digested by the gastrointestinal secretions. So it consists of cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins, gums and mucilages as well as non-polysaccharide lignin. So what and all the dietary fiber contains? It consists of cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins, gums and mucilages and non-polysaccharide lignin. Some bacteria in the large intestine can degrade some components of fiber releasing products that can be absorbed into the body and used as a source of energy. So partially the fibers can be digested by some intestinal bacteria which is good bacteria or probiotics like lactobacillus that I don't know which is present in our intestine. So some of the components of the fiber also can be digested and it can be utilized for energy purpose. Next we will see how this dietary fiber is going to have an impact on the health status of the person. So dietary fibers in a nutshell we can uh, see what and all its benefits of dietary fiber. First it helps to prevent constipation. So if you are going to eat a fiber rich diet it is going to uh, relieve uh, your constipation or it is going to prevent your constipation so it is going to add on bulk to your stool so that the person without any difficulty he can pass the stools or motion next improvement in digestive health so it uh, improves your digestion thereby it prevents diverticular disease eatable bowel syndrome hemorrhoids Okay, so it improves the digestion and it prevents constipation, it prevents irritation of the bowel. So thereby it prevents diverticular diseases, irritable bowel syndrome and hemorrhoids. Then it reduces the risk of developing some cancers like rectal cancer. Okay, so it prevents the um, risk for developing intestinal cancers or rectal cancer like that. Next, uh, it also helps in reduction of hyperlipidemia, hypertension and other coronary heart diseases risk factors. So it prevents uh, uh, excessive fat accumulation in the body, it regulates the blood pressure and uh, thereby it prevents uh, many coronary heart diseases as well as the risk factors for developing the coronary heart diseases is getting reduced by eating a fiber rich diet. 
next it increases satiety and weight management so when you are going to take fiber rich diet so it is going to improve your satisfaction towards food or satiety towards food so that you will be consuming very less as well as it is going to um, reduce your weight then it improves glucose tolerance and insulin response in uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus patients so it is very good for diabetic patients also because it increases the satiety with the limited amounts itself the satiety will be increased the fullness the person will be getting thereby it uh, improves the glucose tolerance test as well as uh, glucose tolerance and insulin responses for type 2 diabetes mellitus clients so these are the uh, benefits of dietary fiber so we will say I told about various dietary fibers like cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins, gums and mucilages, lig lignin. So let us see what is this. See this cellulose, it is the main constituent of plant cell walls. Okay, we have studied uh, cellulose is present in plant cell wall in our school days also. So it is found in all vegetables, fruits and legumes. So it is found where in all vegetables plant sources okay plant sources foods like vegetables fruits as well as legumes hemicellulose it is the main constituent of cereal fibers cereal fibers means what uh, what are all the cereals like rice wheat barley jowar like that and all it comes under cereals so it is also present in all vegetables and uh, legumes Next, pectins. Pectins are formed by the combination of a large number of galacturonic acid molecules. So, it is formed by what? So many or large molecules of galacturonic acid molecules. In the presence of sucrose and citric acid, pectin will be forming a gel. In the presence of sucrose and citric acid, pectin forms a gel. It is used in the food industry as an ingredient of jams and jelly so it is used in food industry as an ingredient of jams and jellies so in jellies and jams you can see the pectins okay next gums and mucilages these gums and mucilages are non-structural component of plant cells and they are soluble in hot water only in hot water they are soluble so they can be used as food additives and stabilizers by the food industry already i have posted a video on food additives in our channel you can watch our channel playlist for that so these gums and mucilages can be added as food additives and stabilizers by the food industry next moving on to lignin they are tough woody parts of the plant so they are woody woody means itself tough so tough parts of the plants so dietary fibers can also be classified into soluble fibers and insoluble fibers depending on their solubility in water insoluble fibers means uh, the name itself tells it is not soluble in water example cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and soluble fibers soluble fibers they are readily soluble in water example pectins gums and mucilages so what are all insoluble fibers cellulose hemicellulose and lignin then water soluble fibers pectins gums and mucilages let's see the types sources and action of fiber in the body so how the different soluble fibers insoluble fibers what are all the major food sources as well as what is their action in the body we can uh, discuss in the following table so let's see the soluble fibers so under soluble fibers you have gums pectin mucilages so they are readily soluble in what they are readily soluble in water next we will see the major food sources soluble fibers you have citrus fruits apples oats barley legumes so what are the major food sources for soluble fibers this gums pectins mucilages are all present in citrus fruits apples oats barley and legumes so what is the action of this soluble fiber in the body they delay gastrointestinal transit thereby it improves the satiety 
it delays glucose absorption thereby it uh, it prevents the um, uh, rapid rise in blood glucose level then the, it also lowers the blood cholesterol level so it lowers the blood cholesterol level it delays glucose absorption it delay gastrointestinal transit next is insoluble fibers under insoluble fibers you have cellulose hemicellulose so what is this cellulose and hemicellulose so this cellulose it's whole wheat products wheat bran and the whole grain breads then cereals and vegetables like green peas beans cabbage skin of vegetables and fruit grains so the insoluble fibers are present in whole wheat products wheat bran whole grain breads cereals and vegetables like green peas beans cabbage skin of vegetables fruit grains etc so what is the action of the insoluble fiber then again it will be accelerating it will be enhancing the gastrointestinal movement or transit or emptying then it increases fecal weight that is it adds bulk to the fecal matter then it slows starch hydrolysis of starch it delays starch hydrolysis that is the breakdown of starch thereby it delays the glucose absorption see how this uh, fiber is controlling your uh, increase in blood glucose level that's why i have told it is good for diabetic mellitus patients so these are the um, types sources and as well as action of the fibers in the body hope this video is clear for you all if you like my video please give a thumbs up share and subscribe to science easy tech channel my previous videos link as i have told you earlier i have given in the description box in the end card and suggested icons as well as you can watch our channel playlist bsc nursing first year nutrition for more nutrition related videos based on syllabus based as per inc Thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel